first of all, I really liked it. Before I get into anything else, I really like A Clockwork Orange. And it's one of those movies that is very controversial. People talk about how it... Uh, this is probably a word I can't use on YouTube, so I'm not going to say it. But the R word, I think you all know what that is, has been it's been talked about. It, it promotes our culture. Uh, thank you, way up, dude. I like this. I love this top. This top has always fit me nicely. And I'm look, I'm sorry. I'm going to talk. I'm going to just talk about my boobs for one second. Look at the way they sit on the side in this shirt. I just love them. I just love them. Nick is shaking his head. But why not? I didn't touch them. Ah, well, anyway, so a clockwork orange. What is a clockwork orange rated? Let me see if we can. It's rated R. It is rated R. I didn't have any weird dreams after a clockwork orange. Not that R word. Good night, mister. <laughs> totally different R word. Uh, but yeah, so there a lot of people say that it promotes our culture. What? Frank, thank you so much for the super chat. First, your lovely fiance, soon to be wife. Um, oh my God, I can't wait till I can say your wife. I'm so excited. Uh, drops a super chat and then you do. You guys don't have to do this, but I love you so much. Thank you. Was rated X and not allowed to be released in the US for a while. Oh my gosh, that's so interesting. See, I didn't even know that. This is one of those movies. Um, so it was, wow. Okay, so it's, it's a 1971 dystopian crime film, which is kind of all I ever knew about it. So I didn't realize that was rated X. And so I was expecting, it is based on Anthony Burgess's novel that was written in 1962. 200 Watt Studio, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Oh my goodness. Uh, Clockwork Orange is one of best Kubrick, one of Kubrick's best, oh my God. So many themes going on in it. So many themes. And it's, I'm sure I could watch it three or four more times and pick on, pick up on different things and form different opinions based on how many times I've seen the movie so this is I knew it was based on a novel I've never read the novel but I kind of would like to um so yeah I didn't realize that they weren't able to release it in the United States for a while so it's funny going into it I was really expecting it and and not that it isn't horrific because parts of it are but it's meant to portray that hey this is a terrible thing it's meant to sort of get across that these are terrible people the film was a box office success grossing 41 million in the United, that's a lot back then, in the United States and about 73 million overseas for a worldwide total of 114 million on a budget of 1.3. That is incredible. Incredible. Stanley Kubrick is fantastic, really. I and I haven't seen many of his movies, which bums me out. I've seen The Shining. Good night, mister. Oh my goodness. Good night, mister. Thank you so much for the super chat and for mortgage money. My whole heart. <laughs> you got to tell me how your house house hunting is going too. Oh my God. I, you don't know what R word I'm talking about? Uh, grapes. You like grapes. Grapes. I like grapes. You know the grapes that you eat? Those. That R word. Grapes. Um, yeah, it's, they say that it, it promotes grape culture and all of that sort of thing. So people get, yeah, exactly. It's a great movie. And terrible people. And it's meant to sort of portray that. But I was honestly expecting it to be a lot more horrific than it was. It's funny. Maybe we're a little bit, as time goes on, maybe this was was really hardcore for the 70s, the early 70s coming out of the 60s. But I would have thought back then maybe it wouldn't have been quite so sensitive. So I was honestly, maybe I'm desensitized. I was expecting it to be a little bit more intense than it was. To me, it really was, I, I was expecting much more gratuitous violence. I knew there were a lot of grape scenes. So I was expecting that, or at least there were, there were two, one almost and one that actually happened. And I guess one in a film. So I was expecting those. It really, they didn't show that much. They got how terrible, they got across the message of how awful it was without explicitly showing you what was happening and I thought that they did a fantastic job at that so I was expecting it to be so much worse than it was I really was I was like oh my god I thought this was gonna be awful and I watched it. I was like it wasn't I think my I, I'm gonna have to watch it a couple more times but I think my first walk uh, watch through a lot of it was me just watching the scenes and watching the colors and watching the sets and their performances and I it's so uniquely shot I loved the feeling because it was distinctly 70s feeling but it also had this look of you don't know when it was because it was 70s looking while also feeling super uh futuristic not in the same way that they tried to make things futuristic in the 80s this was a very unique way of doing it that I haven't seen before and I really enjoyed it 
Um, can you put on a monocle like in the movie? Uh, if I had a monocle, yes. Yeah, I mean, look at that outfit. I absolutely love that outfit. I want to go back to wearing clothes like that. That looks like something from the 1800s that he's wearing in this like dystopian future sort of. And that's that's uh, obviously his name is Alex. That's played by Malcolm McDowell. It's McDowell, right? Malcolm McDowell, who I've always known as an old man. I mean, this is way before my time. So I've only ever known him as an old man. I've never seen him this young. And I was reading that in the book, he starts, it starts with him being 15 years old and ends with him being 18. To make it a little bit less controversial in the film, they started him at 17. And by the end of the film, he's 20. So thank you, Andrew. Uh, yes, Darth Fernando, this is on HBO Max. 200 Watt Studio, thank you so much for another super chat. You guys are so wonderful. Um, nature versus nurture, political corruption, state versus citizenry, et cetera. Yeah, and it's very, very interesting because they play with these, these themes of, yes, Alex is a terrible person with no regard for anyone else. He just takes what he wants. He's he's forcefully forcing himself on women, stealing, beating the crap out of people. I mean, he put that old man, Mr. Alexander is his name, right? Uh in, in a wheelchair and his wife died because of what he did to them. So he's this horrible person, but it still explores what they did to him was just as horrible and how you can't change human nature like that. There has to be a choice. And I think those are such interesting themes to have. Right. And so by the end of it, he's back um, to his his old self. You know, I think it's interesting, right? The most horrendous part of it, he watches all these terrible things happen. They make him ill. It's such an interesting, as you're watching it too, where he's shown all of these, yeah, that is such a gnarly scene where they force his eyes open like that um, and make him watch these awful movies while on this medicine that they've given him to make him feel sick. So he feels sick while he's watching this. So he associates feeling terrible and sick with violence with sex with you know uh anything really that's bad including beethoven's ninth which is a song that he's loved he put it on all the time to listen to uh Lud yes excuse me ludwig von beethoven uh and so that was it's it's very very interesting to watch and he's not given this choice which then he goes out into the world and he can't defend himself either so he's then becomes it's a weird sort of poetic justice but you still are recognizing how it's wrong right he didn't choose this he goes out into the world and he's now uh, a victim of the very violence that he was dishing out to other people I mean it's so he even runs into the old man that they beat the crap out of in the beginning of the movie just because he's drunk and homeless and singing like it's just <laughs> try the wine oh god yeah he was he was so suspicious of the wine this is my favorite thing. I've heard Jim say good evening like 1000 times. And then and I never knew where it came from until I until I watched this. I didn't realize he was quoting a, a clockwork orange, but that was uh, Mr. Alexander. And here's another. No, Josh Fernando sex absolutely isn't bad, but a lot of people think it is. I see this conversation happening even now in, in today's society where they think sex is bad. People shouldn't be having it. It shouldn't be something that people that I, I could get into that conversation for hours, but I, I won't because I go on rants about it. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, there it is something that people still view in a negative way, which I think is so odd. I just, you, you're alive once and you don't want to feel pleasure, especially when it's, as long as everything's between consenting adults, I don't see an issue. So I do love how they call everyone. He calls everyone brother, everyone's brother in the movie. Uh, the, Here's another part of it. I didn't understand maybe half of what was being said, maybe a little less than that. You get the gist, so you understand, but there's so much slang in it that there are 100, hi Debo, 100% uh, things where I'm like, I'm guessing at what they're saying. I think I understand what they're saying, but I don't get a lot of the words. Like apparently uh, yabos, I'm assuming is nuts. I caught that at one point in the movie. Orbs, I believe they were referred to as eyeballs. It, there are a lot, and those are just the ones that make sense to me that I got. There are some in there that I was like, what did he just say? I don't even know. Hi, John Smith. Hello, brother. Yeah, it was really, <laughs> real Sith Lord. So 
Yeah, this was one of those movies that I definitely am going to need to see a couple more times. Again, the the, the real things that I noted besides the, sort of the themes, and I'm sure there are other things I'll pick up on on future viewings. It's just how how beautiful it was, like how beautifully it was shot. And then the performances. I mean, Malcolm McDowell was fantastic. I don't know if this was his first movie, uh, and, and I should have looked into that first or if this was just sort of his first big break, but he was phenomenal in this. Oh, and here's the other thing. Sorry, there is, this was what I was going to talk about and I'm getting distracted because this movie was so good. I I really liked it. Um, Nick, can you go over a little bit on the, because I want to make sure I get the name right on the cast because there is, where is he? He played Julian. He was the bodyguard of Mr. Alexander after his wife died, so he wasn't left alone. Uh, David Prowse was also the, not the voice, as we all know, but he was the man in the suit for Darth Vader. He was Darth Vader in the, obviously, the original trilogy. Um, and and so he was sort of uh, praised for bringing a, the physicality of it, the way he moved, the way he walked. It was so menacing, the way he stood and held himself. And he was also a bodybuilder. He trained a couple of guys heavily in in um, in some other movies as well, movies that he had gone out for. 200 Watt Studio, thank you so much again for the super chat. You guys are so amazing. Who is more inhumane, Alex, when he's gang leader or government who takes whatever humanity he has remaining? Exactly. It's such a crazy thing to, to consider, right? Because he is truly a terrible person look especially as a woman you're watching what he's doing and you're like oh my god he's an awful person I would want to kill him myself if I could right if I was put in that situation but you think about what was happened to him and at, there's this point in the movie even after they show you how how awful of a person he is there's this point in the movie where you're still kind of rooting for him which is crazy there's it it turns where you're hoping that he gets back at some of these people even though these are people that were getting back at him including the government including the doctors that did this to him even though he he wanted to do this it's interesting he essentially got himself into this situation because he wanted to get out of prison so badly um but yeah it was and and again it was the priest that kept advocating that like is is it really goodness if he doesn't choose it? Which is such an important distinction to make, right? Because if you're not choosing it, are you really good? And the argument on their side, that was the governor, was he the governor or the prime minister? was something like that. He was saying, uh, well, it doesn't matter, does it? Because the end result is the same. But it does matter. It absolutely does matter. So it was, yeah, it's such a such a good movie with so many themes. I need to watch it again for sure. I loved A Clockwork Orange. I'm working my way through all these classic movies. Boogie Nights is on my list. Uh, another one, please, guys, don't, everybody yells at me. I've been yelled at so many, so much time for this. I haven't seen Pulp Fiction I'm going to. I promise. It's on my list. I was looking for it last night, a place to watch it. Um, So, yeah, that's on my list as well. But as far, Alex is a product of the society that has broken down. He lives in the poor public housing and he's surrounded by poverty and crime. Yeah, yeah. And that's also something to. So here's my thoughts on that. That's something to keep in mind. Yes, I don't think that gives you a pass to go around doing horrific things like that. It's sort of that's an argument that people make today as well. And it's it's one of those arguments and and you'll I'm sure know what I'm talking about. Well, well, they're a product of their environment. You know, they're doing these things because they had a hard life. And it's like, yeah, you can't go around graping and murdering people, though, because you had a hard life. Like, sorry, that's not how that works. And. Yeah, he sort of grew up, but he still had parents. He had a house to live in. His house was pretty nice. It wasn't that bad. Uh, oh, Christy and I watch Pulp Fiction all the time, Frank. I got, I have to watch it. It is on Rage Watcher right now. So that is, yeah, like it doesn't give you a free pass to just be an absolute monster because you had a rough life growing up. If that were true, Nick would be a serial killer. Like that's, and I would be, I don't even know what, oh my God. So it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's an, it's an argument to be made, but it also has to stop at a certain point, right? Like you can't be like, cool, you can go around doing these things because you had a terrible life. And that is something that's brought up a lot, even now, a lot. They're like, oh, you know, these youths, these youths have had a terrible life. We can't blame them. Like, yeah. (laughs) So yeah. Pulp Fiction's on my list. I'm definitely going to be giving this more viewings because I know there's so 
much to talk about here. I don't really subscribe to the nature and nurture thing. Honestly, the older I get, I think some people are just born evil. Nick's over there nodding his head because, yeah, absolutely. I think that you're either a piece of crap or you're not. Some things, you are a product of your environment. Do you ever notice that serial killers and, can I say the P word on here? Is that no? You like them young. It's not good. It's terrible. Uh, are often victims of that themselves when they're younger. It's it's so weird how it's almost always that. Uh, so I do think there's some there is something to be said for it. But you also see people who have clawed. Thank you, John Smith. Have clawed their way out of these horrible horrible lives that they live to go on to do amazing things to get an education or to to solve I'm not solve world hunger we haven't solved it but to you know find cures for this or find there a hundred percent are people that do that right so what is it in people who have lived hard lives but they get themselves out of it they work hard and they go out and they do amazing things versus someone who doesn't and people who had amazing lives I can even name one that I that I won't but I know of Nick knows who I'm talking about someone who had a wonderful life great parents fantastic upbringing and he's just a monster so it's really weird right like I think that there's something to be said for nature versus nurture but I also think there's something to be said for just some people are just rotten we know so little about the human brain that we don't know what's going on in there we don't know like do, do we know what makes psychopaths and sociopaths I don't even think we really do so yeah. Ex exactly, exactly, Darth Fernando. Psychos will be psychos. Oh, Chad Clink. Yes, I absolutely know who you are. Hello. <laughs> uh, his former gang members become part of the status cops who beat Alec. Yes, I didn't even get to that. Thank you, 200 Watt Studio. I didn't even get to that. He, hi, Reese. Um, yes, his former, and they didn't, there was one former, the one who like didn't really, who was the one that was just kind of there? They didn't really explore his character at all. J it, was it Georgie? No, not, no, it wasn't him. James Marcus. No, it was the other one. It was, Jim? yeah, I think it was maybe Jim. He was just Jim, kind Jim. of, Dims. No, no, no. So it, it was Dim and Georgie, and they were the two that were trying to uh, take over, I guess, from Alex, right? And, and then there was the other one who he didn't beat the crap out of, who just kind of stood off to the side and was like, whatever they we never really found out what happened to him but yeah it was Georgie and Dim who went on to be cops and that was just why and and that's another thing that you see right too like pow not and and I will you'll never catch me saying all cops are bad of course that's insane there are bad people everywhere it doesn't matter I think we need cops I like cops <laughs> I want them around um but it is interesting to see sometimes who gravitates towards positions of power and that's not just for cops that can be for politicians for anything right um, some of the people that that gravitate towards positions of power where they can bully. How do you weed that out? Right. How do you know? So interesting. Debo, I don't know if you've seen A Clockwork Orange, but watch it. Yeah, exactly. Buck Norris. Absolutely. Evil doesn't care about your bank account or where you were born and raised. And uh, some people are just evil. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Big was the dim. Dim was the big dumb one and his mouth. I hated his mouth. It was terrible. I don't know. It was like the way he talked. and He was always smiling. I'm like, ah. Reese, two of your brothers are cops. <laughs> are they good ones? They're probably good ones. What about this guy? Oh, God, that guy. He, Chief Guard. Chief Guard. He reminded me the way he was very stuffy, very all about the rules. He definitely didn't want Alex to get this treatment. He did like it when there was a naked lady on stage, though. He was like, hey, uh, who doesn't like a naked lady? Come on. And <laughs> he reminds me very much a little bit of, of not Dudley Dursley, um, Harry and, and Harry Potter reminds me a little bit of Harry's uncle, Vernon, Vernon Dursley, just like very straight mustache, very neat, very straight laced. He's like very everything's normal. This should be normal. Um, Carlito, you definitely should watch this. I watched it for the first time last night and I just have to say it's such a fantastic movie. And again, a lot of it is just watching the shots, the way it's filmed. It is very, very unique. The set design is I love the set design because again it there are elements of it that feel very 70s but then elements of it that you don't know what time it is like it feels separate from any real time period even now in 2023 so yeah yeah the prison it was it was depicted very well in the movie it was intimidating but also very strict so yeah definitely watch A Clockwork Orange if you haven't seen it I can't recommend it enough I can't believe it took me this long to watch it but I'm really really happy that I finally did so yeah, Clockwork Orange. I think next I want to do, 
Maybe Pulp Fiction, right? And then Boogie Nights. Something like that. I know Pulp Fiction. I've got to just do it because people, every time I say I haven't watched it, people are like, what? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I'll watch it. Uh, but yeah, that's my review for A Clockwork Orange. If you haven't seen it, definitely please do. Thank you all to who joined. You guys are, so, and thank you so much for the super chats. You guys are warming my whole entire heart. I just love you. Thank you. And uh, I'll be back later tonight at 6 p.m. We have Jenna's coming over. We have Sexy Sisters. She's, there's no way that she's seeing this. Do you think I can talk about what I made? Nick says, just don't, just in case. Okay. Uh, I made, there's a, there's a surprise that we're going to do. I don't think I've seen all Stanley Kubrick films. I think the only other one that I've seen is The Shining, which I also love. The Shining is, oh yeah, and full, that's right, Full Metal Jacket. But I saw Full Metal Jacket years ago. I was definitely too young to be watching it and to really even grasp probably what the movie was. But I liked it when I watched it. So Full Metal Jacket's another one that I just want to rewatch again. But otherwise, I I need to see The Killing by Stanley Kubrick. Okay, I'm adding that to the list. I want to watch more Kubrick films because he died in what, 1999. So what was the last movie that he did? The one you watched said was weird. The one that I watched and said was weird. Oh my God, what was it though? Now I'm forgetting. We were just talking about this last night. With Tom Cruise. Oh, oh, Eyes Wide Shut. I watched Eyes Wide Shut for the first time, and it's such an odd movie. It's not a bad movie. I know some people, I don't think it was bad at all. It was very interesting. That's a good way of putting it, Buck Norris. Interesting. Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah, it's Kubrick old nerdy. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that that was uh, Stanley Kubrick until I went to watch it. I was like, oh, I, okay. Um, it's Again, it's not a bad movie, but it's very weird. It's very interesting. So yeah, intense with the Illuminati. Yes, <laughs> yes, very much so. That's a good way of putting it. But yeah, so thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you later tonight at six for Sexy Sisters. We're going to have a good time. It's going to be really fun. And uh, if you guys like this, please hit the subscribe button. Please subscribe to my channel. My, sub my subscribers are just like, <laughs> so hit the subscribe button if you like it leave the bell on so you get notifications when I do go live or when a new video goes up leave me a like leave me a comment because that helps so much with the algorithm YouTube hates me because I don't censor myself very well I say words all the time that Nick looks at me and he's like oh my god <laughs> and I'm just not thinking because I want to be able to talk how I want to how I want to talk so that helps me a lot and uh, you guys are wonderful thank you so much again I'll see you next time bye